the telephone. New York operator, what can I do for you? The taxi company, please. Coming up. Hello, Binkle Taxi. What can I do for you? I need a cab. Where are you? Essex Street, on the Lower East Side. Hold, please. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, but the only driver in your area isn't answering his radio. He seems to have disappeared into thin air. You don't have any other cab? No, not right now. No one wants to work the night shift in South New York. The area is full of knuckleheads. So the only cab available in this area is the one with this disappeared driver. Yeah, we haven't heard from him in days. We even reported him missing to the police, but they don't care about a disappeared Mexican cab driver. They keep telling us that sooner or later, a detective will contact us by radio and they'll start an investigation, but I still haven't heard from anyone. Anyway, I can send you a cab from Harlem, but it'll still take about half an hour. No, I can't wait. I'll figure out something else. Okay, bye. All I needed was a missing cab driver. It seems that the only way to get away from here is that damn Chinese cab driver. Again, buddy, I already told you, I on way. The company says that there are no cabs in the area. Well, obviously, I own the cab driver in area. Hey, wait. The receptionist said the only cab driver for this area disappeared three days ago. Disappear? I know disappear. I know answer radio, that all. And why don't you answer the radio? I sell it, make big money. You sold the radio? Yes, sold. I pick up more clients going round. Radio no help. Something smells fishy. And what you want now? Nothing. Forget about it. Whatever. So you're the only driver in the area? Yes, and I on wait! Something smells fishy. And what do you want now? The receptionist said the cab driver who disappeared was a fat Mexican. And you don't seem much like a fat Mexican. I don't understand what you say. You understand all too well if you ask me. I'm not interested in your game. But if you're Mexican, I'm Abe Lincoln. I'm Mexican. Adopted Mexican. Lived many years in Mexico. With uncle. Of course. And what's your uncle's name? Mm, my uncle called... He called Diego, Diego de la Vega. Diego de la Vega is Zorro. Yes, yes, his friends often call him Zorro. He's make-believe, he doesn't exist. What, you tell me my uncle no exist? Let's knock it off with this story. I don't care who you are or where you come from or what you did with a Mexican driver. Just take me to the Melville port and I'll keep my mouth shut about all this. Easy, right? Blackmail me. You can call it whatever you want. That's just how things are. I don't listen to Black Bear. Whatever you want. I hope the police believe your story about being Zorro's Chinese nephew. Okay, okay, okay. You win. 
You get in cab, but no say nothing to nobody about this. That's better. Where we go? The Melville Port in Brooklyn. The cab glides over Manhattan Bridge, a solitary figure ignoring the speed limit. In my head, a quartet of pneumatic hammers continues to bang on my temples, reminding me that there's still a good amount of whiskey in my veins. Not exactly the best way to go to a meeting that seems like it was set up to get rid of someone quickly. You happy now? I bring you here and now I go away. You're not going anywhere. Wait for me here. I must wait you here? I don't want to wait you here. This place is scary. I want to go. Stop whining or I swear I'll get your taxi driver's license revoked. License? Need license to drive cab? Great. A Chinese cab driver without a license who's driving the cab of some Mexican guy that nobody can find. Welcome to New York. Take a look around. They probably called me from this telephone. I remember hearing a ship's siren during the call. Hmm. There's something on the ground. Dannazione. It's blood. Fresh, very fresh, otherwise the rain would have washed it away. I didn't like this case right from the very beginning. These traces of blood certainly don't win at any points. Damnazione, that Chinese cab driver ran away and left me here. I hate cab drivers. It would be better if I called the police. Yes, I'd better call the police. Hello, operator? Operator, there's no line. Someone must have cut the cables. That explains why the telephone call I received was cut off so abruptly. No cab and no phone. Looks like I'll have to take care of things myself. stick. From the markings on the side, it must be one of the rods they use to measure the depth of the water. Right now, I don't need it. It's too dark. I can barely see where I'm stepping, but I can see a blood trail pointing to the docks. electric panel. Nothing I can do. The panel is completely useless. Hmm. There's a flashlight here. Yes, I'll take it. The flashlight is in good condition doesn't have any batteries. Finding something ready to be used would have been too easy. There's a toy company logo on these crates. Who knows, maybe Santa Claus decided to give up his sleigh for a more practical merchant ship. They don't fit in my coat, otherwise I'd be more than happy to carry a huge wooden crate around New York. These are the typical things that are essential to make it in a big city. There's a toy company logo on these crates. Who knows, maybe Santa Claus... 
They don't fit in my... These are the typical... It's pitch black. If I take another step, I might end up in the water. Drowning seems like one of the most unpleasant endings I can think of. Anyway, I have to find a way to go to the docks area. The blood trail points in that direction. It's the Harbor Master's office. There's a notice. We would like to inform you that the Harbor Master's office is open daily from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. still be used. The light from this boy definitely doesn't work on its own. It must be battery powered. Maybe it uses the same kind as my flashlight. I can't get there from here. And what should I use it for? Yes, it's a good idea, but with the stick, I would be only able to touch the boy. I need something that will help me hook it. Crates, barrels, and other crap. Everything that you'd expect to find at a port. Hmm. This car tells me I'm not the only one at the port. I didn't come to steal cars. A rowboat that has seen better days. No, it's saying something that it's still floating. metal door. It's closed. There are just hangars and warehouses for the next two miles. Walking is not an option. like there's something inside these crates. Let's see. It's part of a pipe. It could be helpful. A ton of useless stuff. What should I use it for? It's not a bad idea, but I'd better put some pitch on the object that I want to attach to the stick. Yes, I'll take a little. Now the pipe is full of pitch. It should work as glue. A rather improvised hooked stick. And what should I use it for? Yes, this should work. The improvised hook does the job. It hooks the buoy and brings it to the pier. Okay, I brought the buoy closer. Okay, let's hope that the boy takes the same batteries as the flashlight. They take the same batteries. 
If I weren't already up because of that anonymous call, and I hadn't found traces of blood at a semi-abandoned port, I'd say that today is my lucky day. Shed some light on this story. Gun and flashlight in hand, I walk around the crates scattered around the port. I'm careful to cast my light everywhere that someone could be hiding with the idea of whacking me over the head with something when I least expect it. There isn't anyone on the dock. I decide to look around the piers. And there, I find something that doesn't really surprise me. A dead body. Sean's dead body. I touch his face with my fingers. It's warm. He can't have been dead more than 20 minutes. Rifling through the pockets of his coat, I find a bottle that, from the smell of it, must have rye whiskey in it. And a couple documents with the name John Ford on them. They're done so well, they almost seem real. All of a sudden, a noise behind me brings me back to reality. But it's too late. A set of knuckles meets my jaw like a truck. I fall to the ground. From the rebound, my finger pulls the trigger and the gun goes off. The trajectory of the bullet is as random as my shot. The owner of the fist stands there like a statue, making noises like a caged gorilla at the zoo. I try to think of a quick way to knock him over. He's as big as a house, but a kick to his legs will knock him over like a consumptive kid. Right before I'm about to jump, the guy turns around and runs away. I follow him. But as soon as I get off the piers, a light beam hits me right in the face. Hands up, says a voice, but I can't see the face. New York police, continues the voice. Del Nero, that's a great story you just told. An anonymous call, a mysterious assailant, and a dead body. Sounds like the plot of one of those crime novels so popular these days. I bet it's those kinds of books that made you the lieutenant you are today. Hey, I wouldn't joke if I were you. You're not in a position to be joking. Let's summarize your version of the facts. Around 20 past midnight, you got a call from a man. He said he had information for you and asked you to go to the Melville port. You agreed to meet him. When you got to the port, no one was there. You decided to walk to the piers, and there you discovered the body of Sean McLean a former police officer who had been your partner in this department years back until the Valenti case when you both got kicked out of the force. And to conclude, you claim that you were assaulted by some mystery guy who was chasing you when you got arrested by officers Harris and McGee. Now, is this all correct? It's the third time that I've told you the facts of the matter. I can repeat it as often as you like so that you can see whether I trip up, but that technique isn't going to work. You are accused of homicide, Del Nero, and I suggest you cooperate with us if you don't want to end up in a cell. There are some unclear points that I'd like to shed some light on, if you don't mind. Sure. I don't have any other appointments. My knitting class has already ended. Del Nero, joke around if you think this behavior will help you. At twenty past midnight, you got a telephone call from a man that asked you to go to the old Melville port. You agreed without thinking twice. Let's talk about the telephone call you received. It was a guy with some information about one of my cases. Okay. It must have been very important information to make you go to the port in the middle of the night. What information are we talking about? Information on a person I'm looking for. Interesting. Based on your story, when you got the call, you went right to the Melville port. How did you get to the port? I took a cab. Interesting. From the telephone records, we know you called a cab company at 1227, but we don't have any proof that you really did take a cab. How do you explain the fact that no driver reports having you in their cab?
That behavior won't get you far. When you got to the port, did you meet anybody? No, no one was there. So you didn't meet anyone. What did you do when you arrived at the port? I took a look around. Good. The officer said that you were inside the port. Why did you go to the piers? There were traces of blood. Don't lie, Del Nero. My officers didn't find any traces of blood. Why did you go to the piers? Instinct. Do you know what that is? That behavior won't get you far, Del Nero. Del Nero, I'm tired of your attitude. I hope you like this room, because until you decide to talk, you're staying here. Have a nice stay. Goodbye, Del Nero. Dannazione. Great. A homicide charge was all that was missing. I wonder what else this day has in store for me.